Okay. Now, uh, we're on the call today to talk about content. And as I think everyone on the call knows, uh, the legal industry content leaves um, a lot to be desired. Um, so we've brought you on to maybe get some inspiration from how other industries do things on the content side of things. Um, now, most law firm content is just sort of the legal alert, right? So there's been a change in some sort of legal regulation, or whatever then the lawyers will write about it in detail uh, and just sort of put that on the website and then the BD teams put that on LinkedIn with a nice graphic and job done, right? Um, there's more to it that we could be doing, right? So um, what are, apart from the legal alerts, what would you recommend lawyers and law firms be doing um, on the, the content generation side? So we'll just open it up. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, so it's a very good question. And I think one thing that law firms and most firms need to be particular about is what do they want to be known for? So what it goes back to positioning and messaging, which I think is a lot of companies don't really know what they're doing. So going back to your point, you could pump out tons of content, but there's no focus in terms of, you know, your geographic scope or what your actual offerings are or, you know, who your audience is. It's not really going to make sense. So one thing I always recommend is going back to the, the drawing board and really nailing down what is your positioning in the market? Um, what is your messaging? And there's you know, if you just Google, I think it's a message message house that'll help you structure it a little bit better. So this is the first thing I always do before I even start advising people on content strategy and content creation is first know that because that'll kind of flow into what you're doing. Um, and maybe I can share. But yeah, you know, that, that's quite difficult because, you know, a lot of our firms are the full service firm. So we do everything in, uh, you know, under the sun. So when you say we have to find out, what did you say? We have to find out what our messaging strategy is or what we want to be yeah. known for. Yeah. Well, what could a law firm be known for apart from being like the senior, you know, or trusted business advisors? I mean, we're so, not Adidas or Apple or anything like that. Absolutely. But the problem with that is that everyone, that's everyone's positioning. So if I'm just doing a Google search, I have no idea um, what, what differentiates you from the others. So as a, as a consumer, I, I don't really know between, you know, law firm A and law firm B. Um, when I talk about positioning, I always try to look at, you know, make it more sensible. So look at where the revenue is coming. So for example, if you know that three of your biggest offerings, maybe say 60, 70% of what you're doing falls into those buckets, you can still position yourself as that full service, but in terms of your positioning on the website, in terms of the content, um, you would focus a little bit tighter on that. And maybe I can share an example so it makes sense um, for the folks listening. Okay. Yep. So here's a brilliant example of uh, a law firm in the States that was able to increase their conversions by six, over 654%. So once again, here's the first version of the landing page. It's relatively simple, clean. Um, but the problem is there's no clear focus. It doesn't really call out what it is they does. And then you move over to the other side. This is the after, and there's a very clear, you know, big clear font. It's not a bunch of fluff. You get straight to the point. And I think this is something that a lot of companies, not even law firms could, could learn from. And then it goes back to, you know, we were just talking about making it specific for your audience as well. In this case, he says, okay, what's your situation? Let me help you. Um, and you have an option to cl click on, I'm exploring bankruptcy. I'm looking to negotiate a settlement or, or whatever. So, so and yeah. Yeah, so you can see very clearly that the, the before is your typical law firm. It's about us or it's about the lawyer and the law firm, right? I'm Kate and we've got this. But when you look at the after, it's, it's showing you, you know, what the problem that they help with, right? And they're asking you, what's your situation? So they're turning it to the, the client. Absolutely. Be beautifully said. You're absolutely right. I think too many organizations, whether it's tech or finance or law, just go on and on about themselves. And I always try to equate it to a networking event. So for example, if Will, you and I have been at a networking event and you just went on and on about yourself, you didn't ask me about anything about me. Of course, I'm going to be like this Will guy, he's a, you know, so like, <laughs> but we do the same thing on our, you know, digital channels as well. You can see you're absolutely right. Hi, I'm Tate. I do this. I have this degree. I, I have this kind of background, blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, no one cares. So you're absolutely right. And the, the um, after version, he says, look, you need help with your expert loans. Or you, what do you, let me know what you need help with. I'm here to help you. So mm -hmm. going back to the trusted advisor, 
it's not enough to say I'm a trusted advisor because everyone says that you mm-hmm. have to show them. And one way you can show them is through simplifying the language, uh, creating these little categories that puts it in the audience's shoes rather than the law firm's shoes. Okay. So here you can see it's video, right? So that's very engaging. And it's not just a standard sort of YouTube video that's been embedded. It's a mobile video and that's different to start, right? So you're like, well, what is this, right? So then you want to click on it. So it's a little bit more engaging. Uh, absolutely. I mean, there's a couple of different things and there's one thing that I'll talk about a little bit later, but you're absolutely right. Going back to, you know, a lot of times we think law has to be very stuffy, very formal. Um, and it's not the case. At the end of the day, you are buying from someone else. So yes, this could be a very high glossy, you know, corporate video of him in the boardroom, um, you know, different multiple shots and stuff like that. But in this case, if you are a student, that may be a disconnect from, you know, who you actually wanted to work with. So you're absolutely right. In this case, you know, it's a mobile video. Um, he's talking to the camera. He's making it a bit more personal. And he's asking, you know, how you can help. Or how can I help? And then once again, we'll have to have this gentleman have that on the show, but he goes even deeper. So for example, this is a um, video chat bot. So he's talking about briefly about himself and how he can help. But then on the video itself, you can click, you know, uh, each of these different navigation things. You can click, oh, I want to negotiate a settlement. I want to stop garnishment. I want to follow whatever that is. Um, so once again, it's it's interactive, but then it's, it's personal. It takes you back to that human level because once again, he could do what every law firm is doing and have these very glossy partner shots in the boardroom, but then. So is this like a pick your own adventure book? Like you can choose which chapter, so you play it and then he'll say, so what would you like to do? And then you pick whatever it is. And then he has a response, pre-made response for that. Yes, I believe that that's, that's, that's the way it is. So, so going back to your point, it's very much for the audience. I don't have to sit here and listen to him talk about his entire spill when all I'm looking to do is negotiate a summit. I click that, ten, you know, two seconds later, I'm hearing about you know, how he can help with that. So once again, it, it, everything, every piece of content you put out, you know, it's very common sense. It should be for the audience, but so many brands forget about that and they always make themselves look good instead of going back to what you're saying, helping the audience uh, solve their problems, in this case, legal problems. Okay, so the main medium here is video making it more interactive and, and getting the lawyers to show their human side. But that requires us to actually get the lawyers to agree to do, to do this. And not all the lawyers are very, you know, willing to go on, on camera, right? Um, how about for, so we know video is very good. Um, how about written content? What, what are some ways that we can sort of uh, present this written content in a more unique way as opposed to just putting a blog post or a PDF that people will never download? Yeah, and that's a very, very good point. Um, and I think it goes back to who is your target audience and what is the message you're trying to get across? And maybe I can share another example of where I get inspiration. Um, so for example, let's say I'm trying to get inspiration, a very simple graphic I'm trying to share on, on social media. One thing that I'll do is just literally go to Google. This is a very generic term, legal, single part legal advice. I'd probably go into more specific ones if you have a, a specific offering you're trying to do. And I look at images and I see how people, the simplicity. So for example, I could have a 10 page document on the formalities of a will in Singapore, for example. But this is a very simplistic um, thing that if I'm just trying to get a, a quick overview in terms of what I need to look out for, you know, these simple icons, uh, the short to the point headlines and sub headlines could be a way for me to stand out. And it goes back to what we were saying earlier before the call is efficiency. So one thing you could do is make this a template and you can use a tool like Canva or something similar where this is a, a template that you use for all your legal updates. You have you know, the headline, you have three or four key points you want to get across, the logo, and then maybe some icons or something, visual representation. Um, so that might be one way in which you get across. You know, the challenge with that is you have to be able to understand it. So for BD marketing people, you have to understand what the update is and be able to distill that down. Um, you know, that, that's, that's a big challenge if you're not familiar. Otherwise, you know, you just kind of lean on someone in the practice and say, you know what, how would you sum this up for someone in 30 seconds um, or, or one minute? And you can record the audio from a 
you know, a partner saying that, and then you, you as the, the marketer, the BD person can take that and distill it down to something a bit more bite sized And this mm -hmm. can link back to the bigger one. Um, All right. So we yeah. have video content, we have sort of graphical, you know, simplifications to, to make people, you know, understand it at a glance. Any other sort of content, right? We know podcasting is popular. Any advice on, on that route for law firms? So I think podcasts, basically everyone wants to jump on the podcast because it's the, the hot medium. Yeah. My question is, do, do your, does your audience actually listen to podcasts? So this is a question I always ask my audience, which is why I'm not on Apple or Spotify yet, because I polled them and, you know, only 10% listen to the podcast. So just because it's a hot new medium, I, I would say the caveat is doesn't mean that you necessarily need to put uh, creative podcasts. Also, make sure that you are thinking about it from a long-term perspective. So a lot of people um, create podcasts and they put two or three episodes out and then they just stop, which in my opinion is so much more, so much worse than not creating it at all. Um, so think about the long-term um, you know, strategy you have on, behind it and how can you sustain it? So what, what is the theme or what is the topic you want to carry through? So mm -hmm. for my kind of video podcast I've created, it's digital marketing tips for business leaders in Asia. I don't try to talk about everything in the sun. It's very age specific because I understood that there was a gap in the market um, talking about practical tips for, for this audience. Um, but once again, I think it's about identifying a niche because the US ones do it very well. Yeah. Now, one thing that I've seen or noticed is a lot of the content that law firms pump out is very reactive, right? So there's a change in the law then the lawyer will write something. Hopefully what they write is a bit, you know, very commercial and say, these are the main issues, but they're always, you know, waiting for something to change and then they do it. What sort of evergreen content would you recommend law firms be, you know, producing? And then we can talk about repurposing that on, you know, different channels. Yes, I'm so glad you, you asked that as well. Cause I think too, too often we look at trending content because it is hot and, and sexy and stuff like that. But you look at the sh average shelf life, and this is something we analyzed when we were at Forbes, the average shelf life for a trending piece of content is less than 48 hours. So you could, you know, get, you could see a huge spike in that, but if it's something that's only relevant, you know, in that time period, um, then it's not going to have a massive impact in terms of what you're doing over a long-term perspective. So in our case, we did at Forbes, we always did kind of these very, very, instead of very going deep, we'd give a summary and we'd give our perspective. So for example, if it was, uh, you know, a, a global thing that happened, we would talk about in Indonesia or Bangkok or, so once again, we provided a different perspective um, because once again, we realized that it's important to be, have an opinion about it, but we realized that the shelf life was extremely short. So one thing I did instead was to, once again, go back to my best friend, Google, and I type in keywords that I know, um, this is the fastest way to get ideas. Most of them are evergreen and you can do a quick search to see if they're evergreen or not. So let's say that, um, once again, I'm in Singapore. So Singapore legal advice, I, could, I put a space before and after, and I can see what are the most commonly searched terms around Singapore legal advice. So in interestingly, people are interested in Instagram, uh, I guess <laughs> one of the, implications of using Instagram, maybe from a business point of view. Um, here's you, let's talk about Will here, my buddy Will, Singapore legal advice, Will. <laughs> um, so these are the, some of the things, templates. This is another thing that, um, once again, if you are an SME who, let's say you may not have the money to hire a lawyer, you may be looking for templates, boilerplates and things like that you could use for your own. These going back to different content formats, this is, this is evergreen. So this is something that you know, you could update every year or every quarter. Um, and it's still, you know, based here, one of the top searches in Google. So it means that people are looking for that on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. um, and then once again, it goes back to the joys of content marketing. Once I download a couple of your, your templates, I'm going to have a, I'm going to feel like I'm, I owe you something. So if I am, ever am a legal dispute as an SME, I'm going to go towards you for my, for my legal services because you have been supporting me for pro free. Um, by, by providing these uh, templates and, and guides that I could use for my own business. Mm, okay. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about repurposing content because most firms, right, they'll post it on the website. 
hopefully they do all the SEO stuff that you should be doing um, on a website. And then they might post it on LinkedIn, potentially on Twitter or you know Facebook. Um, and that's it. So I want to give you a, a case study. You tell me what you would do. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm the BD manager. I've been given a legal alert about a change in, let's just say, uh, data privacy, right? Data privacy change in Malaysia. Um, it's a one pager, pretty complex uh, content. Uh, comes to my desk. What do I do? <laughs> what should I do with that to get the most views and get people onto, onto the website or to get people to book a call? Once again, the first thing I always do in terms of formats is, is pull my audience. And this is something you could ask your clients, your partners, uh, what kind of content do they enjoy consuming? Because once again, you could spend your time creating social posts and blogs and videos and, and graphic infographics and stuff like that. But if you know that your audience is more skewed towards one, and I've done this, it, it, there is a discrepancy. So for example, my audience is in the marketing space. So they like these short bite-sized videos, very visual. If I send them a long white paper, they're going to zone out versus one of my clients is in the finance space. And when they pulled their audience, they liked these kind of um, kind of these longer, more in-depth um, either writer reports or blog articles. So if I were to send them something kind of short punching, like it wouldn't be for them. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's no one size fit all. That's why I always, I literally have a simple Google form that I have. Uh, my clients and, and partners fill out and I say, okay, which of these formats do you consume? And I also ask them um, what media or what types of uh, media they're consuming. So for the ex they could, example, they could tell me, um, you know, Joe, I am reading HBR or I am watching this Netflix series. And then I can get ideas in terms of the type of content they actually want to consume versus the content that I want to position. And in my case, um, I did this with my audience and I think about 70% read HBR. So the first thing I did was I signed up for HBR's um, newsletter subscription. And so I just looked at this this morning, I get the updates in terms of how HBR does it. And it gives me some insights in terms of how they like to be, um, I'll try to pull, bring up that example, how they like to be communicated to. So when you sign up for it, this is a Harvard Business Review, right? Yes, the Harvard Business Review. Yes. So when you sign up for the newsletter, it asks you what type of content, right? Correct. So I, I can get inspiration from this. If I know that, you know, um, even the way they do it. So in this case, uh, HBR, Harvard Business Review, has their weekly hot list. So this is one of the things they do. Um, so once again, I can get some ideas in terms of how they format it, the, the, the way they position it. Um, so for example, it's a short headline plus uh, a snippet or what is the, the insight out of it? Um, and then it has by category. So I can see, okay, if I know that they're talking a lot about leadership and managing people, how can I make that applicable in the digital marketing space? So as a CMO, how can you manage your strategy? How can you manage your team for 2021? Mm. So I get a lot of inspiration only from talking to my clients, but understanding the type of media and also understanding um, how they do it. This is an example from a newsletter, but I've also subscribed to uh, HBR on YouTube to better understand um, even the lengths and the topics and stuff like that. Okay, so pull your audience, see what kind of content they like. Let's say you get a, a wide breadth of different types of content. So we're going back to that original data privacy article. Uh, so we can turn that into a white paper, into a long form content, right? What can we do with that to break it up and put it on, let's say, LinkedIn for greatest uh, exposure, for example? So I, I, I take a slightly different approach. And for example, I do all my um, updates via video. And the reason for that is, and you can do this as, as well if you're listening to this, um, I can use it from so many different mediums. I can pull the audio and let's say I wanted to do an audio version. I wanted to upload it to Spotify or um, iTunes. Um, there's a tool which you can do that pretty seamlessly. Um, I can take, if it's a longer form video, the update, I can go in and I can take uh, maybe 20, 30 second snippets of that and I can seed it across social media. Um, I can pull the transcript. So I, I can either use tools or I can have a, a VA pull the transcript and I can use that as a way to um, have a longer text version. 
So I, I, I start with video because it's far easier to um, put into different formats. If you are starting with text first, there's a tool that I would recommend that you do that you can auto create videos. Um, some of you may be familiar with it. It's called Lumen5. So Lumen5 is a AI powered tool that allows you to copy and paste um, text. So for example, it's an update or it's a white paper, whatever it is you want to do. And let's see. All right, doesn't give any good examples, but if you've ever seen, um, I'm, I'm forgetting which, which government organization does, I think it's Davos. They're kind of text images and stuff like that with, it's like moving, it almost looks like a moving slide share. That's kind of what this does. So the great thing about it is it'll, it'll use AI to pull what it thinks are the key points and then it'll auto populate these visuals and, and slides. So you can go in and manually edit, but it's getting smarter and smarter where it understands, yeah, or at least it tries to understand what are the key points and it'll create a short video. Um, I'm trying to find an example. Almost like a slide share video. Um, and it, the great thing is it'll auto populate the, the text. So for example, the text will appear like this. You don't have to do anything. You just copy and paste it into here and it'll give you, um, you, can, you can edit it. So let's say you want it, uh, 20 seconds, I wanted two minutes. I want to change the color. I want to change the positioning. But the most part, the AI will do most of it for you. All you do is copy and paste it into the platform. Yeah, so that's great. So instead of just posting a link to that long form content on LinkedIn, which probably no one's going to click and read, um, you can just put the key takeaways in the post and put this here and then put the link in the comments for people who want to read it. So it's a bit more eye catching. And best of all, you don't need Premiere Pro. You don't need any of these, you know, fancy editing software or whatever. Um, so this is something any, you know, BD, competent BD person can set up quite easily and make a template and you're off and running. I, I, absolutely. It's one of the fastest way to create kind of these snap, snappy videos. And like you said, it's about kind of uh, mixing with the format. So you could have a text only version. You could supplement with that a graphic like we were showing earlier, or you could have a, you know, a 30 second to one minute video that is a bit more interactive and it goes through each of the each, each of the steps or each of the takeaways. Okay. Well, I have uh, quite a few questions which I will uh, extend over to the, the Q&A session. Uh, but for those who are watching on YouTube and not BD Roundtable members, um, where is the best place that they can get in contact with you? Um, so LinkedIn, I'm usually pretty active there. Um, just type in Joe Escobedo. Um, and or the brand builder, you should be able to find me. Okay, we'll put the links in there. And just everyone, uh, Joe does some live uh, YouTube videos. Was it every Thursday? Yeah. Um, so every Thursday, I'm going live on LinkedIn, 12 p.m. SDT. So I usually share uh, marketing, sales, and branding tips. So if you want to join us, it's very much like this, very interactive, very free flow. All right. Thanks so much for your time, Joe. Thanks for having me. All right, so now we're gonna uh, move into the, the round table session, Q and A session. Um, so I, I've written down like five or six different technical questions, which I want to ask Joe. Um, but before I get to those, um, everyone else, you can turn your videos on if you, if you dare, um, unmute yourselves and uh, let's uh, ask Joe some questions. So does anyone have any questions for Joe to start off with? Don't be shy, David. Any questions, Charlie, Vicky? Um, sorry, I'm just curious. Uh, just if someone could brainstorm some ideas for me, creating yeah. content in a law firm um, where you minimize or go around actually having to get the lawyers involved in it. <laughs> I mean, I need ideas because I think that's the biggest hurdle for me a lot of times. Getting content out is. Um, lawyers um they don't have the time or they just don't want to so i, I and i it's it is a a roadblock and i try and use stuff over and over again to repurpose but if anyone has any flash ideas for that that would be great well 
I guess the first thing that comes to mind that's worked well at Zico, right, is mm -hmm. to play on their ego, right? They love to be shared and they want their information out there. So maybe share some examples of other firm or other lawyers in mm -hmm. Indonesia who are doing it really well and say, uh -huh. hey, is this something that we can do with you? I, I would only need like five minutes to do a video um, talking about the key issues. Um, okay. You know, so play off of their ego. Vicky, do you have any ideas? Um, yeah, it's not, sorry, what did you say? No, no, any ideas um, that for David to, to help pull tease content out of the lawyers who are so time strapped? I th yeah, I, I think it is. I mean, apart from, you know, you know, spending money to make money kind of thing that I, I, th I think, and I say this to my lawyer myself, there's a lot of ego <laughs> involved in it. And, and I think also actually something that I found is um, just generally in my approach to any sort of DD studying, but particularly something where it's gonna, where the law, is going to have to invest therefore my immediate level um, is to sort of almost put it to them like a legal argument kind of you know here, here's my argument and here are the facts behind it um, and this is why I, th I think you should that you should you know be taking on this you know content creation thing it could you know not necessarily having to use you know hundreds of stats and things for them but just almost approach it a bit like a legal problem and you know you know your high school essay here's, here's my argument and here's the evidence to back it up sort of thing i could just jump in here i think yes i agree with uh vicky and bill very much in kind of playing to the ego and making it about them um one thing that i would do and i'll, I'll share my screen again is one thing i do from my kind of video podcast and Going back to time, I think time is relative. So for example, I have presidents and CEOs spend an hour of time with, with me, which shouldn't shouldn't be possible because that's probably cost you them, you know, <laughs> it's a tons of money. But um, it goes back to appealing to their ego, you know, wanting to share their insights. And everything that I do on top of that is I interview different peoples within the community. So for example, some of them are, you know, my employees, some of them are prospects, some of them are partners, um, some of them are industry experts. So I have a kind of wide list of people that I'm featuring. And you know, if you get an expert, you get someone within the community or clients, um, then obviously going back to what Will was saying, you showcase that back to the partners and say, okay, hey, here's what we're doing from so-and-so, this expert, here's what we're doing from one of our partners or whoever it is. Um, it goes back to the ego. They all want to be part of it eventually, but I think it goes back to starting with who, I guess the lack of better words, who had the biggest ego? because those people will always be very eager. I, you know, every organization I've ever worked with, there's always you know, a couple people who have very big egos. They're very happy to contribute, not because they wanna do it for their organization, but they wanna make themselves look good. Nothing wrong with that, but appeal to that and make sure that you're getting them involved first. It's kind of like the guinea pigs and then showcasing the, some of those snippets in terms of uh, what other the partners or what other kind of um, people could do. Um, so giving them exam real life examples. Yeah. Also, you know, David, you are you helping out with the firm directory submissions like Chamber? Yeah, yeah, I yeah, I handle all that. Yeah. So one thing that I did, this was when I worked at Baker's when, you know, these partners were so time strapped, you know, I would uh, in almost interview them about that particular matter. So mm -hmm. I would be doing all the legwork. They would just need to talk. I said, OK, what was the main issue that this client faced? Um, what did we do that was significant or innovative, blah, blah, blah. So I created this uh, case study and they didn't have to spend time writing it. They didn't have to do any of that sort of stuff. They just needed to talk with me for five, 10 minutes. You could do that in a partner's meeting or, you know, just allocate some time for that. And then you're kind of just, you know, preparing the content and, and writing up a, a nice case study, which could then be turned into uh, lots of different things. Um, okay. You know, I think just to add on to that, um, if you are doing like voice recording, there is a tool called, it's literally called Otter Voice, um, O-T-T-E-R Voice Meeting Notes. And it will, it'll auto tra transcribe. So for example, let's say you're catching up for coffee or, or, or lunch or whatever with one of the lawyers and you say, hey, going back to Will's point, I'd like to interview or I'd like to hear your thoughts on something, you know, 
just go ahead and record it and it'll auto transcribe. It's smart enough that it picks up between the two um, yeah. people speaking. So for example, it can even, Will and I have American accents, it can pick up between my voice and his voice and you know, auto transcribe it. So going back to efficiency, I know, I know everyone here is a lean team, myself included. So those are some ways to just make the process a bit more efficient. Okay, great, thanks. Also, I tend- Well, I was also gonna just- Go ahead, go ahead, Vicky. Sorry, <laughs> um, sort of in relation to your comment, you know, related, but not directly um, about submissions. You know, I've had partners, you know, the director of submissions, I've had partners in the past to sort of part of Pizviga, you know, they're wondering what are the leading partners and things, and whether again, it's something, you know, as a sort of an, an argument for getting them to do this creation that the more their name is, you know, it's not just about the matters that they're working on. Obviously, yes, you know, if they're working on the big sort of leading edge matters, but if you can just sort of see that their their name is generally out there, you know, when the, the people, the researchers at Chambers and Google 500 and stuff are doing their research, if you can see that their name is regularly out there with articles and things, um, that that's another, sorry, my passion, um, that that can be another sort of argument in yeah sorry vicky you're cutting out yeah sorry can you can you hear me now yeah, yeah that's okay but yeah no i mean just say hey if you want to be a band one lawyer you got to be seen in the market by other lawyers what other way to be seen than to participate in these sort of things um joe i i have a question about sort of storytelling because we all know that you know other industries use storytelling very, very well. Um, and law firms had a really unique uh, advantage over all the other sort of uh, companies out there is we really know the issues and the problems and that these companies face. And we can share how we've helped save them time and, and, and a lot of money. Um, so how, talk to us a little bit about the, the impact of storytelling and how a law firm might go about doing that where it doesn't give too much confidentiality away and it's not too sort of, uh, I don't know, it's a bit more professional. Yeah, so that's a very good question. I think one thing I, I look at is a lot of people think there has to be this, this huge brand narrative, like you're, you know, you're writing the, the you know, Homer's the, the Iliad or the Epic or something like that. But it's not really the case. So I, I have been doing it more recently. Um, very, very, very short. I'll give you a very quick example. It's a bit, it's a bit cheesy. Uh, I wasn't a fan of writing it, but it's gotten tremendous kind of uptake. And I can share this with you guys later. Is I was talking about a, a, a letter that I received from one of the deans at one of the universities. I had done a lecture for them. Um, so I was telling how my wife found it first and she came home in tears. And so she handed me the letter and I thought she was going to be mad at me or some stuff like that. But then she said, oh, I'm so proud of you, blah, 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 blah. So it, it goes back to, you know, a very, very short kind of antidote or story that happened in my life that ties back to what I do in terms of business. Um, it, it involves the emotional appeal. And as a result, it kind of, you know, went a bit crazy on LinkedIn, still getting uh, people engaging with it. But uh, that's another thing is like, simplified like these mini stories. I always tell people like, the best kind of things, particularly for social, is to talk to, just write down, um, stories or things that have worked for your clients. Obviously, you know, going back to confidentiality, I wouldn't name a specific client, but if they're saying, okay, um, one of my clients was asking about marketing automation, I recommended Blink, they implemented it and they were able to get so-and-so, or even they found it interesting and they recommended their client, their, their colleagues, or it helped them in so-and-so. These little bite-sized antidotes and stories, I think can be super helpful. In addition to the big case studies, I think it's good to supplement it with, you know, big big versus um, small stories. And then, you know, there's there's usually the standard case study format. There's like challenges, solutions, like stuff like that. What I try to do is I try to get inspiration once again, not necessarily from business because I don't think that most of those case studies are very interesting. I try to get inspiration from who I think tell interesting stories. So I think of like the, the Disney's and the Pixar's of the world who are the masters of storytelling. Um, and I look at some of the, if you type in like um, Pixar's rules for storytelling, they have like different frameworks, they have like different archetypes. So having a strong character um, can be helpful. 
and I try to equate that back to what I'm doing in, in my business. So rather than taking, once again, if you can see, I don't take stuff from the industry because I think it's pretty much the same and you'll see the same thing if I type in legal, it's going to be all the same. I take inspiration going back to storytelling, people who do it incredibly well. So Pixar, Netflix, Disney, um, you know, wherever you, wherever you get your stories from, Dr. Seuss, I get inspiration from Dr. Seuss. Um, all these things, you could write a poem, you know, about, you know, legal advice and stuff like that. So all these help me generate new ideas that break away from, I think, what everybody else is doing. Yeah. Also, I think, you know, we all, at least the BD managers and the lawyers, we get caught up in the legal advice and the legal content. But a law firm is more than just, you know, legal. There's humans who are working here. We're doing CSR projects. We're doing lots of different like mindfulness activities. Maybe you guys have some sort of like, um, you know, running club or book club or whatever it may be that your firm does. Um, then share that, right? Find ways to, to bring the human side of the law firm um to 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 social media and encourage the lawyers to get creative with that and produce their own content um and you know sell the firm by themselves actually yes i'm glad you brought that up uh i can if i can jump in and, and share one more example in yeah, terms of really. creativity for legal this for me is one of the most creative ones i've seen um so this guy is a, a lawyer in the states called his channel is the legal eagle <laughs> uh, he's I don't know if you've seen him. He's, he's an actual lawyer. So he talks about, you know, actual, um, you know, legal updates and stuff like that as part of his series. But then what he does incredibly well is he takes um, actual TV shows, uh, movies, where they talk about, you know, uh, different cases, and he'll review those as an actual lawyer, say, okay, how accurate were these? Um, what are some of the things he would recommend to these fictional characters? So he's done one on Suits, which is the popular law firm series. He's even done one on and South Park. Um, so once again, he's taking inspiration from different pop culture references, and he's adding a legal spin. Um, and actually, I, I have, I wouldn't be interested in legal advice, but I, I'll sit through one of these videos. Some of them were like, you know, 20, 15, 20 minutes long, and I'll sit through the entire one because um, it goes back to, you know, how can you make it educational? How can you make it logical, feeling what everyone else does? But how can you add that emotional aspect and make it more entertaining? And I think this is a beautiful example of a gentleman who, um, combines both sides of the brain um, and does it and does it very very well so check out legal eagle um he's got a ton of different videos he even has traffic park on here uh, so yeah he's, he's a good one in terms of creativity in the, in the law space well that's so what areas what areas of law does he practicing because i'm thinking whether like i think it's a great idea and there's a law firm here called mark lawyers m-a-r-q-u-e i think and they do i think they do like sports or you know sort of the sexy law and stuff so their um their website is quite sort of tongue-in-cheek because although it's cool but it, it's i think it's things like um entertainment law and that's the thing i can't i can't like, quite remember now what and i wonder whether some customers some clients would find that a bit flippant is that you know do you think that appeals to, could you put that on a corporate law firm? I don't know, this guy may be a corporate lawyer. Yeah, I, I, I will have to double check in terms of what, what his speciality, but, but that, that is a good point. It really goes back. But I, 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 would, I would challenge that argument um, because I would say that just because people are in a corporate law firm, like I know corporate in-house counselors who are very, very senior. And if you talk with them on a regular basis, they're cracking jokes with you. You wouldn't even know they're lawyers. So I think that's a misconception about kind of the law space and legal space is yeah, these people, that's all they do is they, they, you know, they eat, sleep and breathe law. But at the end of the day, they're like everyone else. They're watching Netflix series. They're watching cat videos on YouTube. They are people at the end of the day. And like I said, in some of the senior legal in-house, if you speak to them on a regular basis over coffee, you wouldn't have no idea. So they have both sides of their, they're very serious in the, in the you know, border, whatever they are. And if you catch them with their coffee, they're like very personable and very applicable and stuff like that. So I would say, don't, don't forget that all, all humans have both sides of us. Also, one thing I want to point out on that is a, one of the reasons why we post content, we do all this sort of stuff is for recruitment, right? Uh, we're not just doing it to get new clients. We're doing it to, you know, attract really good lawyers. So if we do sort of, you know, a day of the life in this law firm or, you know, behind the scenes of how this lawyer works or, you know, join us in a call with this, you know, lawyer, um, that's really good for, 
uh, prospective candidates to really find, oh, this is a law firm I want to work for. They, they're kind of, you know, down to earth. I know what their office looks like. I know what their managing partners like. Um, so that's another angle that you could take too. I can, I can completely attest to that. I mean, even in my kind of small, small business, we attract some of the top um, interns from the, the local universities, like, you know, the local Ivy Leagues. And I asked them, why would you join us? You can join Google, Google, Facebook, and so on. But they say, okay, I watch your videos. I watch your live. I feel like I already know you. Therefore, um, you know, I'm keen to, you know, work at your company. So yes, there's, there's a multiple of reasons that it could support you. But I think recruitment is a very good example. Now, you mentioned interns. That's something we haven't really talked about on the BD Roundtable. But there's a whole potential to get the interns, paid or not, usually paid, right? Yeah. Uh, um, just sort of a, you know, a uh, small fee, but um, they can help produce content too. And they're younger and a little bit more creative than, than uh, some of the, those working in the law firm. So maybe, you know, get the interns on a project to create some content. I, I, absolutely. And I think you'll get, you know, you could do an entire day on kind of, or a session on reverse mentoring as well. So for example, they could advise you, for example, if they're active on TikTok or some of the more bite-sized how do you create content in, in 10, 15 seconds? You know, obviously you wouldn't take everything from TikTok, but I've seen it work in multiple industries where people take inspiration from these kind of these non-professional platforms and they've applied it to what they've done um, and they've seen a huge increase. So I think it's about taking inspiration from platforms that we deem unprofessional and then adding that professional layer or adding that layer that applies to what we're doing. Um, so I've started my own kind of Scott sketch comedy series just as an experiment during COVID um, combining uh, uh, marketing and sales tips which are generally quite you know dry and redundant and adding you know pop culture references to it in a very fun uh, short way and that's kind of taken off even going back to some of my clients are CMOs very very senior folks and they are the ones on YouTube saying oh I, I love this videos <laughs> which I was not expecting I was thinking okay maybe like you know TikTok kids or like we interns will love it but one of my clients who's very, very senior, he heads up the region, uh, he's on YouTube, you know, commenting about it. So yeah, it goes back to, I think what we were saying earlier. Mm. One question I had though, you sort of talk about getting interns involved and I think in one respect, it's a great idea. Something that I've sort of come across or that you just, I think you hear quite a lot about is because they're lawyers and they're so concerned that basically anything, I mean, look, I'm anal, you should see me checking a text message before I send it. But, um, lawyers are very concerned about, you know, have I, is there anything, is, is this all legally correct? Is there anything that could be misconstrued, blah, blah, blah. And that can often be a sort of a bottleneck in terms of actually getting the content out. So how, how do you overcome that sort of issue? You know, if you just, is it just that you keep things very high level? You've obviously got the disclaimer, this isn't legal advice. Have you got any suggestions there, Joe, or anyone else? Um, so, yeah, I, I think... Some of my clients are in the, the finance and insurance space, and it's, it's a highly regulated space, um, probably one of the most highly regulated. And same thing, um, they have to include all the disclaimers. Um, uh, for example, if it's a partner who's publishing that, they, they put like a, a disclaimer that comes through the regulatory board here in Singapore, um, you know, saying that it is their own kind of opinion, stuff like that. I think it also goes back to um, training. So one thing I do with one of my clients who's in the finance space is train them on what they can and can't say on social media. So for example, they have this 40 page um, compliance guideline just for social media. And obviously no one is gonna read that. No one's even gonna flip through it. So one thing we try to do is uh, a combination of uh, maybe a 30 minute training in terms of how to leverage social media if you're in a, the legal space, um, as well as implementing some of the do's and don'ts. That way they're learning kind of what they can and can't say on, on social media. Um, but they're also learning the same way. So I think it, you kind of have to tick both those boxes. You have to tick the legal disclaimers um, on your website or on your social media profiles. And then you have to educate, whether it's your interns or your partners, um, sometimes what they can and can't say on social media or even the, the marketing BD team. Yeah, um, as we wrap up, um, a lot of the advice that we get about, you know, trying these new training things, trying all this new stuff is do like a pilot program. And I do a little pilot program with one practice group or maybe one partner and see how it goes. But for this sort of stuff, like if you just post a random, like the very first video content on your YouTube channel or on LinkedIn, uh, people are like, oh, what is this? But so how would you advise us to start 
you know, producing a bit more video content? Should we do the whole, you know, trial, you know, beta testing with some clients, see what they think, or just put it out there and make it, you know, available for everyone? So I, I always try to get going back to, I think we were talking about earlier, the ideas, all my ideas come from clients or partners or people I, I work with. Um, I try not to deviate from that because I know that I'm taking that first block, which is answering a question. That's my, my job number one. Um, in terms of experimentation, like even the sketch comedy, I did not consult anyone. I was, you know, I had an extra free time one day, it was that an afternoon and I said, okay, what are some of the shows or what are some of the things that interest me? Um, and maybe it interests others. So for example, I'm a big fan of Curb Your Enthusiasm. And I, I said, okay, how can I take that Curb Your Enthusiasm meme and apply that to the marketing space? And I just did it as an experiment. I said, okay, I'm gonna publish it on YouTube. Um, no one's gonna check it. But I did, a, I did an experiment on this uh, LinkedIn Live recently. It kind of took off because um, this is another thing that we didn't talk about, which I'll share very, very quickly, is on YouTube, um, on LinkedIn, LinkedIn has LinkedIn stories, YouTube has short videos, Instagram has YouTube, um, short videos. This is something that, uh, oh, I think it only shows up on my mobile, sorry. So I think most of the time it only shows up on your mobile. So LinkedIn stories, um, YouTube has these, they call them short videos. And what they've, they've done now is because it's a new platform, I'm trying to find, all right. So I've been, all right, so there's some Arnold Schwarzenegger, okay. So it's very, these very short kind of videos, they were promoting it in the feed. So I did not publish it, I did not share it on any channels and it kind of took off organically, which I was not, you know, surprised. I was, I was very surprised at because once again, it was an experiment that I didn't think would, would really work, um, but it kind of took off and the platform was promoting it organically. So that's something you can try if you were doing it with um, YouTube videos, um, LinkedIn stories is a similar format. So LinkedIn has just introduced um, LinkedIn Stories, which is a usually a 20 second cap on um, on videos, but like YouTube Stories, it's showing up at the top of your top of your feed. So once again, they are kind of prominently pushing it in your face. So might as well take advantage while it's 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 there now. Okay. Um, so I just want to run through some of the, the tech solutions that we mentioned, uh, which will help. So the one, the one, one was Lumen 5, mm. and we'll link to all these in the, yeah. in the description, and I'll link to them in, in Slack. So Lumen 5, and that helped you create some video content with some text and stuff. Another one was Canva. Canva. Uh, Canva is really good if you, need, if you don't really have an in-house graphic designer, and you want to make something decent. Uh, Canva's good. Um, also, there's a, a website, I don't think we mentioned it on the call today, but I've used in the past called Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S. That's good for video, like stock footage video, mm. um, which I think Lumen5 might do or link yeah. to. Uh, but, you know, if you're talking about some change in Indonesia, you can find some video about Jakarta and just put some text over top of it uh, just to make it a little bit more interesting. So Pexels is good. Um, are there any other sort of uh, tech things that we mentioned, Joe? Uh, we mentioned Otter, O-T-T-R, oh. which is the uh, voice recording auto transcription. Um, one thing that I didn't mention, I don't want to overwhelm people with tools. Um, going back to the, the bite-sized videos is there's another tool called Clipomatic. So it's an app and you just, once again, I speak and it'll, create an auto transcription at the bottom. And the great thing about it is it cuts you off at one minute. So Will and I are talking about this. If you have a lawyer who's very long spoken and you want to kind of cut him off, it'll automatically cut you off at one minute. So this is great for like social. It's great for like um, these bite-sized videos. And then the great thing is it auto -tran transcribe. So one thing we realized when working at LinkedIn is about 70% of people watch videos with um, the sound off. So including um, video subtitles, captions can help um, increase engagement and viewership. Um, so Clipomatic is an app. Uh, I think it's only a couple of dollars that you can install and it'll auto transcribe and create these one minute videos for you. Yeah. And and David, one one way that you can entice your lawyers to start writing some content right, is when we compare our LinkedIn uh, post as Zico the the post with the video summary of the legal alert gets thousands of views and impressions 
Yeah. Whereas the one with just a link and something standard only gets a handful, okay. right? So just go look at other law firms' websites, see what's working, what's getting the comments, um, and say, hey, we could do this or you could do this. Up to you, right? Um, they're hiring you. They're they're running the show. So, but it's up to the BD teams to kind of present that case, right? Yeah. Say, hey, if we do this, you only need to invest like five minutes, ten minutes, mm. um, and this is the result. So, and, and it would be good to keep track of that as well, somehow, um, your social media performance and if any engagements come from that, you know. Yeah. All right, any last minute questions for Joe? We're coming up on time. All right, uh, with that, thank you everyone for watching. Uh, this video will be edited at some point. Uh, oh. <laughs> Uh, Charlie, hi, did you have a question? You're unmuted, so we should be able to hear you. Oh, no, can't hear you. Yes, okay. Well, uh, let us, if you're not in the Slack group, uh, you can join that and talk to us there or reach out to us on LinkedIn. Uh, Charlie and ask uh, Joe a question. So uh, with that, thank you everyone for joining. This video should be up fairly soon. Uh, so until then, uh, thanks and see you next time. Thanks, Will. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Joe, if you can stay on for two minutes. All right. You got it, boss. All right. Thanks, everyone. Okay, let me stop recording. Stop recording.